Welcome to Whitetail Rendezvous, hosted by Bruce Hutchin. I'm so happy you joined us today, and you're going to find out a lot about whitetail hunting on the show. This is Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast, episode number 385. Hey folks, we got a new sponsor. It's called Buckwild Coffee. What's so special about Buckwild Coffee? Well, a gazillion people go to Starbucks every day and drink coffee. Well, why shouldn't Buckwild Coffee offer you light, medium, or dark roast with free shipping? All you have to do is go to whitetailrendezvous.com, go to shop, and order your coffee, and I'll ship it out for free. Hey, thanks so much for visiting Buckwild Coffee. The best brew in the West, the best brew around the campfire, the best brew in the hunting shack, the best brew anywhere. Buckwild Coffee. Get yours today. Bianca Burnett's going to be on the show today. We're heading down to Georgia. Her AKA, also known as Hurricane Jane. You can find her all out on social media. She was raised as a sudden outdoors woman, but it wasn't until a few years ago she started whitetail hunting. How's that work? Well, when she was on the farm, she had to work hard and the men did all the hunting and she just, you know, took care of the game when it came in and learned how to process and take care of game, but she never hunted them. And all that has changed. She's got great stories and what it takes for women to become a huntress and become very successful in the outer doors. It's going to be a great show, folks. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. Hey, we're heading down to Georgia today, and we're going to talk with Hurricane Jane, or uh, Jane Bianca, or Bianca Burnett. I don't know. Hurricane Jane, what's your best name? (laughs) Um, Outside of Hurricane Jane, uh, most people call me Bianca Jane. All right. And Bianca Jane is a nurse. She works with kids, and she's just got into hunting. She's done some uh, off-road racing and a razor junkie, and she's a She's a country gal that grew up uh, in a farm family. So I'm just excited to have you on the show and, and welcome uh, welcome to Whitetail Rendezvous. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to um, get to talk with you today. Um, share a little bit about my first year kickstarting my hunting life. Um, and hopefully at the end of the show, you know, we can I can t- talk more about and give more information about what it's like from the beginning coming in. And thanks for that. And, you know, in your bio, you sent you spent your youth in the woods and grew up in a farm family. So let's talk about um, growing up in the hunting tradition. And as I understand, you just started hunting recently. Is that true? That is true. On my own, uh, it started um, in January for me uh, gunning or bowing for myself. Uh, And so it's, it's fresh, it's new and it's exciting. And so let's go back to the the family farm. And then you said everybody uh, except you were hunters. So let's talk about being raised up in a farm family and having a whole family of hunters. Um, it's really interesting the way um, down here in the South, we tend to say you don't have to be blood to be family. And that's definitely the truth. I was very fortunate to have um, farmland and farms surrounding me. And most of their children were within my age range. and so. I grew up with them. Um, I remember coming home and we had to move cattle or go take out feed or go water, not time, putting the dogs up. Um, I remember when there was coyote issues, they'd tell us, uh, where did you hear them at and where did you see them and them going out to take care of them. Uh, I remember they did a lot of deer hunting. The whitetail was the main in this area. And so when they would come back, it was, you know, it was Part of what I did with them was helping them assist in harvesting their own meat. And even though they weren't my blood family, even to this day, they're family to me. And that's where I got most of my experience from as a child. It just it was just second nature to be dirty, and muddy, and got blood on you handling cattle and goats and getting out there and helping them keep their livestock and everything going like it was mine. So you did assist in the harvest of, of whitetails when you're a kid growing up, what, what did that consist of? They would usually already have it field dressed, which I know that now. I remember there was never any actual guts inside of the whitetail when they made it back. 
I remember they would, there was, at any given night, it could be four or five to six different uh, whitetails out there between the families. And they'd be strung up in the largest barn we had in the area and just sitting there watching them strip the hides off. It was just in unison. It was boom, boom, boom. And then each of the deers would come down and they would start from, you know, start to finish and taking out every little bit. And sometimes it was kind of interesting. I guess they had some, something worked out. Some families would take certain parts and other families would take other parts. And it was just, it was no big deal to me to sit there and watch it. And then they'd help I mean, wash this meat or go throw away this fat, um, wash the tables, helping to hose down where they, they chopped all their meat and stuff. It was, I mean, it was, it wasn't really a chore. It was just something that you, you really just look forward to. Everybody laughing and having a good time and talking about being out there. Uh, it was something that I'll never forget and definitely put the passion in me to want to be able to do it. So, you know, I had to just wait on the opportunity to present itself to be able to do it for myself. And um, being at, go ahead. Go ahead. And, you know, being at their house, that's all, I, that was pretty much the, the main course was deer of some kind or hogs, you know, but deer, you know, whitetail was, was it in every shape, form, or fashion, whether it was smoked or grilled or slow cooked. It just, it was just second nature. When you th- I was just thinking, I wonder what your favorite recipe was. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> when I went a little quiet, I'm going, oh, I'm going to ask her what her favorite recipe was. So what was your favorite recipe? Oh, hands down, it was the deer tenderloin that they would smoke. I uh, remember it was, it tastes like a slow cooked jerky, but unlike being dehydrated and dry like jerky, it was, you know, it was tender. Uh, it, it was it fall off, you know, just fell apart. There was juice just ran out of it, and it was good with anything. We even put it on a sandwich, ate it with some potatoes, corn. It was definitely the easiest that I took to eat, the most flavorful. And then I learned later how important that was because there's not a ton of tenderloin on a whitetail. So now I feel, you know, really privileged that I was able to partake in that as a child. Uh, I'm just thinking, you know, some of the meals I had, the back trap and the tenderloin, definitely, you know, the best eating. And we used to butterfly or still do butterfly up the, um, the back trap. And then the tenderloins, we do a lot of things with, and we like, I like grilling them, um, you know, after they've been mar- marinated just a little bit, you know? And, um, so that's what we like to do. I'm getting hungry. How about you? I know. I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking, can I get some deer burgers here soon? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have to be my second favorite was the burgers without a doubt <laughs> maybe jimmy johns will serve it just a joke folks. Jimmy <laughs> <I John>. wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord so anyway so now you're all grown up and you got a fiance is he the reason that you wanted to start hunting he is he 100 percent hands down was uh he grew up in alabama very very way back in the woods you wouldn't know it now but um his family was like the family I grew up with. They they all hunted. They ate different types of game. They put food on the table by hunting. They didn't go to the supermarket like, you know, we do today so much. And so he had taken a break. I mean, we're talking he was a teenager, you know, out there hunting on his own without anybody and just bringing them in. And uh, so it was last year sometime that he somehow it got brought up. We were watching some kind of hunting show. And it's so funny how I'd never talked about it because I'd always, always, always envious of people who hunted. And I never had the opportunity to learn or have anybody to teach me, you know, and take me out uh, to do anything. And he looked at me and said, would you want to, would you want to hunt? And it was like my face, you know, my, my smile almost cracked my face off. I was like, do I? Are you kidding me? You know, that was like saying I just want a million dollars. And so he was very adamant about making sure that I was properly educated, um, that I was ethically prepared and did things the right way and, and knew how to safely go about hunting. Um, so he, we uh, took the time Well, he took the time to teach me and everything from from how to how to pack my packs going in to, you know, eyeballing my own yard without having to use anything you know how to you know something simple like how to put up your own climbing stand these are all things that you have to learn 
and you know, there's a lot to it. There's way more to it than I would have ever thought. But it's been a, it's been awesome. It's been an adventure. I look forward to it. We talk hunting every single night. We're going to work and we're talking hunting. So I'm very appreciative to him. I'm finally earned my wings to where you know he's he's like he's okay with me going out by myself now. Um, so I'm taking the opportunity to continue learning here. You know, over the course of the summer leading up to whitetail season. And it's just, you know, my heart's pounding right now just thinking about it. I'm that excited. I can't wait for the season to open. Um, it's It's been a blessing to be allowed the opportunity to go out and be a part of the hunting world and do my part. And I'm looking forward to bringing home, you know, my first, my own whitetail to harvest for my own children. And that's all, you know, it's all because of him taking the time and faith to teach me. There's lessons learned there, listeners. Um, fortunately. Hurricane Jane um, met up with a guy that um, that asked her and then took the time. It's more than just asking, hey, you want to go hunting with me? But he, then he took the time to break it down. So she's really comfortable going out in the woods alone. And, you know, uh, props to your husband. Love to get him on the show and get his side of the story. But um, having said that, so you have not harvested a whitetail yet? I have not. I picked up, um, <clears throat> it was January, the end of, it was about the end of January-ish when I really became to the point where I was going to, you know, go straight in, just decided it was all or nothing, which I think was a good time. Uh, gives me time to develop. I've taken the course of the last couple months um, to hunt other things that really get me comfortable being out there and um, getting, you know, comfortable with my rifles i've now picked up using the bow i think I, you know I, I sit here and beat myself up all the time that i didn't just step out in the beginning of whitetail season but then you know i want to make sure that i'm fully prepared comfortable and educated and um ready to face the season head on without any hesitation so have you have you killed anything with your bow or your guns that is a funny, funny story. <laughs> I actually, my first hunt out uh, was a two-day hog hunt. It was way down in South Georgia. It was definitely, um, it was definitely the test right there because although I was out there, I think I added it up in the two days. It was a little over 20 hours that I spent out there, um, you know, just waiting waiting i never saw a single hog uh it was it was which it's it was hard but it was a lesson that i needed to learn uh head on you got to learn to sit you got to learn to be patient and you got to learn to walk away empty-handed uh, i gave it my best i was ready i you know i stayed as long as i possibly could through the rain and the cold and it just wasn't it wasn't for me that time so since then um i've been out on a handful of different turkey hunts are season to open the 16th of this month. Well, last month, um, another lesson learned. I learned about I walked up on a couple of different flocks, couldn't get them to come back. Uh, walked up on one a couple of times, tried to loop around the ridge and call them in. Couldn't quite get them called in, but then I talked to some people. I think I'm a little bit better prepared uh, how to set up my coverage and how to mix up my calls. So, you know, it's, it's it's all a big learning experience. I'm heading back out this evening, actually, but it's great. It's, you know, being out there, I think doing the hogs and the turkey are helping me prepare for my, my end goal, which is whitetail. It's toughened me up. I've tracked a lot of miles. I've, you know, I came home, my back's been killing me. I'm dirty. <laughs> I'm wet. Um, but it just makes you even more sick for it. It makes you want it even more when you do come out empty handed. So I think it was something that I needed to go ahead and go through to be prepared because, you know, you you got to earn it. It's not something that can be handed to you. In the warm-up, we talked about the perception of hunting. So let's just segue right into that segment uh, of the uh, show today. So share with people what exactly you mean by that. Um, the perception of hunting, and I can say this from my own close friends and even some family that had doubts in me, which uh, is kind of sad when you spend extended amounts of hours in the woods, you invest the time and the effort, and they just look at you 
And it's almost like they're laughing because you didn't get a kill. And you, I don't think people really get it. They uh, oftentimes, you know, TV shows and big game hunters, they may not always show you and tell you just how long they were out there, the days they came back without anything. And so it can be really discouraging for a new hunter or a huntress that doesn't have somebody like I do to remind them that this is reality, not TV. And so for, for a new hunter, you really have to stop paying attention to the noise around you and listen to the people that matter. And those are the people that are experienced hunters, people that I have put in years, the people who are dedicated because they are the ones that know the people that don't hunt or the people that just watch hunting. They don't, they don't understand the full concept of it. And so like one of my biggest things that I'm so grateful for is all the great people that I've connected with um, and befriended, encouraging me and reminding me that what reality is and reality is a lot of empty hands, a lot of miles, a lot of cold, a lot of hours. And but it, it, you'll, you know, you, I'll get there. You just, you know, you got White Tail Rondo is pleased to announce a partnership with GoHunt.com. Who's GoHunt.com? Well, if you're a DIY hunter, you need the information at GoHunt.com forward slash insider. Why? Because it provides 4,200 profiles, every unit, every species, and every season. Furthermore, they give in-depth analysis, interactive maps, unit access, and seasonal trends. Draws are very important, and they give you the most accurate information in the business. All this is available when you go to GoHunt.com forward slash Insider. Make sure you use promo code WR when you join Insider. You'll get a $50 gift card for GoHunt.com gear shop. All in all, if you're hunting out west in 2018, GoHunt.com Insider is where you need to be to get all the research information. When you use promo code WR, Whitetail Ronimu receives a small commission from GoHunt.com. Let's stick it out. And I like how you're saying that. I was just reflecting that so many times, you know, the grips and grins are, are important and everybody, you know, puts up, everybody's putting up their turkey um, that they're taking, you know, on social media. And you said something very true. Um, when you watch a hunting show, you don't know how many hours it took to get um, to harvest that deer, to kill that elk um, or moose or just pick your animal. And then the work begins after they do that because the, they do all the B-roll. So you, you do all the hunting. And if you spend any time in words at all, either on private land or, or public land, you know deer just don't come by every single second. Even in the rut, they might you might hear them busting, you might see a, a lot of activity, but having a, a, a buck uh, come by in your kill zone, especially with a with a bow, uh, is extremely difficult. I, I can attest to that. Yeah, I've killed a lot of deer, and you know. Um, but I've spent more hours in the tree stand. You know, I don't know what the ratio is. I, I'd, I'd hate to, I'd hate to, I'd hate know, to even think about it. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I don't even want to think about that, but yeah, you know, to me, the perception is I'm going hunting. I'm going to do the best thing I can. I have that privilege um, to go hunting. And to me, so many people miss that. And I did too, for a long time, I didn't have the joy of the hunt and very simply what that means is this the joy of meeting people, traveling new places, hunting new ground, just the joy of being out there and seeing right. there. The you experience. Know. Exactly. And for a long time it was, you know, I've got to I've got to get this buck. I've got friends that have barn sides of barns, so that's ten feet, fifteen feet loaded with um whitetails, DIY whitetails. And I go, <laughs> How did you do that? They're just really good hunters. They are exceptional hunters. And then it, for a while I said, okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'll never get a barn full, but I'll get a lot of representative trophies. And then I, I realized I was in Iowa and had hunted and shot a nice deer. And, and at the last meal, I said, I just kind of stood up. And I said, I want to thank you guys because this is the first hunt that I really had the joy of the hunt camaraderie, good people, you know, the whole thing. And it was all broken down into the personal joy. And I think so many p times we miss that. And you said exactly, you didn't get something. What's wrong with you? It, that's the, they don't say it, but that's the intent. 
That's and how so, you feel. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, real simple, and I'm going on way too long. You know, give that up. Find your own joy of the hunt, as uh, Brenda Valentine told me way back when I started this whole thing. Bruce, it's your trophy. It's your deer. It's your turkey. It's your hog. Whatever. And it's yours. It's nobody else's. And it's what you say, make of it. Go ahead. It, I mean, it, it comes down to what you make of it. So talk about that more. Um, like, for instance, when I was down there uh, and the hog hunt, every evening when we finally did come in, there was, you know, a campfire full of other hunters. There were older ones. There were younger ones. You know, just sitting around, um, you know, we would talk about, the, of course, like they knew that I was new. And it was just great conversation. That was just when, when we got back. And then, like, while I was out there in the woods, you know, it's dark. It's starting to rain and everything. But you really, when I was sitting there and everything was silent but the forest, you, like I've said, you almost start breathing in unison with the woods around you. And then you realize that for once, you're out there. There's nothing bothering you. You're at peace. You're getting to disconnect. You're in the middle of a forest. There's nothing to bother you. That's something to enjoy. You may not have got anything, but you got a moment of peace. You got to go back and commune with other hunters. I uh, know my first turkey hunt. I got to go out with uh, the son of an old friend of my uh, fiance's. We had great conversation, you know, going from place to place. He was teaching me more about turkey hunting. Um, the next turkey hunt, I actually got stuck out terrible thunderstorm i mean it was awful i mean it, our sirens were going off it was so bad but i was with the guy that owned the land and so he was showing me around but i was so dedicated to trying to find because i saw him there earlier trying to find him that the storm didn't even bother me but it was we laughed and it was fun and just crossing that land and experiencing that being out there i mean it was beautiful so, so it's what you make it it's a privilege to be able to step out in the woods and disconnect from society and social media. And you, know, you just leave your problems behind, you know, not everybody gets to do that and not everybody has a passion for it. And it's something that you have to find enjoyment and just being there in the moment. Cause like I've said, the kill is the peak of the mountain, but the climb is the hunt. That's the adrenaline. That's what gets you excited. The more I'm out there, I don't get anything. The more excited you become. So, you know, you get pumped and you get happy. And those are things that you can't be replaced with other things. It's not replaceable. So it is what you make it. As a woman in sports, sometimes it's it's hard for people to really share knowledge. Now, you're lucky your fiancé, now husband, you know, did a great job with you. But what would you say to the people about <laughs> uh, sharing the knowledge that they have and that you have? Um, I think, of course, for some people, it's been a long time ago. It wasn't that long ago when I had to do my hunter safety course. I, I still remember part of it was being a good outdoorsman or woman is passing on information. I understand not everybody's going to be that way. But that's how, you know, for me, I even have people ask me about other women. And even as I'm just scratching the surface, but it's important to do that and it's sad that some women don't feel comfortable asking a guy because for a long time men didn't feel like women had a place to be out there doing that um but now i, I feel like things are changing uh and i've had a lot of men been very helpful uh they conversate with me and my fiance as turkey are new and it is important because if you're where else are you going to learn from you can only read so many books or whatever you need to learn from somebody that's been on the field or been in your area, what if that hunter or that book or that articles from a different different part of the world, you know, so it, it's very important. Uh, and I understand not everybody's going to be nice like that, but that's another thing that it's about. It's, you know, you should feel good about reaching out and extending knowledge to help other people enjoy what you're enjoying, because why would you want to keep it to yourself? You should share happiness and sharing knowledge to make people more successful is very, is really one of the key points in what hunting's all about, sharing those times. So how do you do that? Um, well, for one, 
I've often, when I make a post or something like that, I'll, sometimes I'll say, any input's welcome. You know, if you got some information, this is what I did. And I, I'll get a lot of feedback, and I'm very grateful for. And then there's some people that I've made a good connection with, um, or I, I can tell by how they talk. that They're open to being asked questions, um, and it makes it very easy. Uh, also, for me, if people, you know, I, mostly women, other women will message me. The biggest thing is you can tell by how people talk and um, how they how they word things and what kind of person they are. And feel, I mean, what's the worst case scenario? If you ask somebody a question, they're going to say no. It didn't hurt you any. But nine times out of ten, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to tell you. Yeah, this is what I think and everything. Because majority of people out there are happy to share their information. They ain't going to share where they're hunting at or their honey hole. <laughs> But they're gonna they're gonna be happy to say you know if I say I went out this time of day and they're like no you went out the wrong time of day or using the wrong call or you know using the wrong food blah 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 and a lot of people are open you just got to step out and ask and take the opportunity to find those people. Now let's talk about your hunting land. You said you get some uh, lease land or you get some land in Alabama and Georgia. How does that all come together? Okay, so. Starting, it all started uh, with Alabama, which is, this is a, a great story. The land that we're club members on, it's a little over 2,000 acres. There's 10 members, so there's lots of room. The owner is very strict about, you know, not over hunting and everything. Come to find out, this is the same land that my fiance used to hunt when he was a teenager. As a child, his family hunted on. So it was. It had a lot of meaning when I found out we finally got we got on some land. And uh, so that area, it's about an hour from here. We'll do mostly whitetail hunting on that. They've got lots. When I was out there a few weeks ago, there were buck tracks everywhere. Every, every plot of land that I went to, it was insane. Um, and so then uh, out there, you know, you can set up your camper and everything. And it's, you know, it's kind of, it's family oriented. You peg on the board where you're going to be at that morning and then you just go for it. And we share uh, our stands. If somebody's got one set up and they're not going there, you're welcome to it. So then I came back home and communicated with some family friends and come to find out they had land also here in Georgia. And they were, they, you know, said, well, of course you can come, come on over. And we had a really bad coyote problem around here. Uh, and so it just kind of branched out, which is a big deal, especially when you're new to hunting. You don't quite realize how hard it is to find land, public land. Um, we do have some public land. Of course, you know, it's more difficult, in my opinion. Uh, but until you get in it, you don't quite realize you don't get to just walk out anywhere and hunt. A lot of, a lot of land you kind of get permission for or, you know, pay your club fees to be able to be on that land. So we're very fortunate. i pretty excited to hopefully put down my first white tail on the same land that he was on with his first, you know. So do you like hunting out of ground blinds or hang-ons or use climbers? We currently will use blinds. Uh, also, we have ladder stands. It really, it really uh, kind of depends on whether or not we're going to be co-hunting or if we're going to, you know, separate. I like the blinds because they're more comfortable, but I feel like I have an advantage with the climbing stand. Well, the ladder stand, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong, but I love having that full view range above them. That's my personal preference. Now, it's a little harder to stay in those longer, but um, so it's nice to switch it up. Thanks for that. Let's touch on involving the whole family. Because the whole show has been about your family. We started off with, you know, the family farm that you hung out with and everything. And now you're starting your own family and, and um, you know, going back to hunt the same land that your fiance, you know, killed his first deer on. You know, that's a hunting tradition. So how do you think that you're going to share this with your, your kids? Um, um, that's, that's something I'm really, really excited about. Uh, my children are still under the age of 10. So I'm very excited that uh, when they're they're going to get to do some of the things that I got to experience when I was growing up. Uh, as far as my oldest one, 
Uh, he, I'm hoping to be able to bring him out for youth season this year. Uh, he's uh, he's loved the bow since before I even picked up a bow, which makes me really happy because now I'm able to do that with him. They're both completely gun ho. If they know that we went out and checked land or been out hunting, they're like, how did it go? What you do? I want to go. They'll go in there and throw on their camo and their boots, and they're ready to go. No, no questions asked. And so it's really awesome, you know, when they're home and we're not out doing something, I'm constantly telling my children, you know, a little bit about this and a little bit about that because I feel like at the young age is the best time to get started. And it makes me happy that they're excited to listen. It's something that they'll they'll call me if they're with their grandparents or something. And they'll ask, well, did you get anything? Well, how did it go? And so you can tell that even though they're, they may not be at that moment, they're thinking about hunting. And we watch a lot of hunting shows. Um, one in particular is our absolute favorite. Uh, they even know him by name and everything. And so that when it comes on, you know, they're sitting around here watching it with us. And so instead of watching reality TV or playing on co- game consoles, I've got my kids out there trekking land. I'm showing them what a buck truck looks like, where turkeys would scratch in. And then they're sitting around watching TV with us as a family, learning the information that we take in from some of the more experienced hunters that I do enjoy to watch. And so it's, it's very exciting uh, to be able to spend that time with them in the outdoors. Hey, Hurricane Jane, um, how do people get in touch with you? Do you have a website or Instagram account? I do, actually. Um, on Instagram, you can find me at hurricane three underscores Jane. And then I'm also on Facebook. You can find my for fun page. It is also Hurricane Jane dash Bianca Jane. I also have my own page. It is Bianca Jane. You can usually get me through either any of those at any time. I'm pretty active on there. I try to keep up with everything. And that's one way that I'm able to share my information and take in other information from other people. Thank you for that. And What's the biggest challenge you think whitetails present for taking a mature buck? Yeah, and from what I can, from what I know as of right now, it's definitely the waiting game. (laughs) You definitely, uh, my fiance has beat it into my head that you're going to have to wait and be patient. Um, Sit. You're going to get cold. You're going to be freezing. You got to have the patience to wait for the right one to walk through. And he said, you know, you got two choices. You can, what, and what type of hunter you want to be. And so, you know, I made a choice and, you know, he's killed so many deer and whitetail that he's more of a trophy hunter at this point. And so I was like, you know what? I think that's what I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. But I definitely think that the waiting game and being patient and not getting excited as a new hunter that you want to kill anything that crosses your path because you kill one that's small, well, you're, you're cutting your own neck for the next season. So you really need, you know, for me to learn to be calm, be patient, not jump at the first thing that crosses my path, but wait for the right one that I'm really going to be proud of bringing home to my family. Thanks for that. We're at the time in the show now that uh, you get to give some shout outs to your crew, uh, friends at work, your fiance or whomever. (laughs) So have at it and then we'll wrap the show. Um, I definitely have a few people that uh, have worked with me. Um, Lit coolers is definitely my all time. Got to have my lit cooler, the cooler that lights up the night. They're big supportive of women who hunt. They've supported me from the beginning. Titanium archery products helps me keep my bow stabilized. Nature's paint helps keep my face covered without breaking my skin out. Definitely a shout out to my fiance. I wouldn't be here without him, without a doubt. Um, My children, (laughs) those two for putting up with me and all my crazy. And of course, my mom for not having a heart attack (laughs) when I tell her that I'm out there. Uh, I think that uh, will about sum it up. Well, on behalf of thousands of listeners across North America, Hurricane Jane, it's just been, it's really been fun. I mean, I've been smiling through the whole thing because um, 
you're what's good about the sport. Uh, you get a healthy outlook. You understand it. You're willing to learn. You're willing to share. And you, you're just passionate about whitetail hunting. So, um, you know, props to you. Congrats. Um, you know, and I can't wait to get some pictures or see some pictures of your post of your first uh, whitetail. So on behalf of Whitetail Rendezvous, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, we got a new sponsor. It's called Buckwild Coffee. What's so special about Buckwild Coffee? Well, a gazillion people go to Starbucks every day and drink coffee. Well, why shouldn't Buckwild Coffee offer you light, medium, or dark roast with free shipping? All you have to do is go to whitetailrendezvous.com, go to shop, and order your coffee. And I'll ship it out for free. Hey, thanks so much for visiting Buckwild Coffee. The best brew in the West, the best brew around the campfire, the best brew in the hunting shack, the best brew anywhere. Buckwild Coffee. Get yours today. For being a guest on today's show. Thank you. On the next episode, I'm excited to head down to Texas and meet up with Matt Gray. Hey, Matt was on a podcast um, with Echo Mountain uh, Gear, and I heard about it. And so I listened to the podcast and found out that he took off from Texas, drove 12 hours, and within three days, he had his first bull elk ever down in Colorado. How did he do that? Well, he's one heck of a whitetail hunter, and he put a lot of the, the tips, techniques, and strategies from hunting whitetails into hunting bull elk, and he got her done. Sit back, relax. It's going to be a great, great show with Matt Gray. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.